when you hear about a drug bust or domestic violence on the news, I can promise you that there's a child there. Children caught in the crossfire. They are taken from their home so quickly that their items are in a garbage bag. See how bags of hope are changing the foster care system one bag at a time. Plus, the enforcer for a Latino prison gang. If you weren't brown, you weren't going to be around. Watch what happens when he switches sides. All that and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Another week means new headlines from Hollywood, from stars proclaiming their faith to new movies coming to theaters. We have it all covered for you. And to share this week's top five stories from the world of entertainment, here's Ephraim Graham with Studio 5. At number five. After a meeting with the Double Wars Committee and representatives of TBN, I've made the decision after prayer, consultation with my team and my pastor, Dr. Tony Evans to not attend any events affiliated with the For the Double Wards, Gospel Music Association, or TBN until tangible plans are put in place to protect and champion diversity. That's Gospel Music's Kirk Franklin making headlines and voicing disappointment. This part of his acceptance speech was edited from the Dove Awards broadcast. This past weekend, a young 28-year-old lady, young girl by the name of Tatiana Jefferson, was shot and killed in her home by a policeman. And I'm just asking that we send up prayers for her family and for his. Organizers issued this apology, accepting responsibility for the error, understanding it wounded Franklin and many in the African-American community. Franklin noted this part of his speech was removed from the show in 2016. When police are killed, we need to say something. When black boys are killed, we need to say something. And when we don't say something, we're saying something. At number four. Last night put the heavy on me. Continued prayers for recording artist Toby Mac and family. The artist lost his son suddenly and posted a few tributes on Instagram, sharing Truett Foster McKeon had joy that took the room when he entered. He was a magnetic son and brother and friend. If you met him, you knew him, you remembered him. In another post, he simply wrote, my heart. At number three. We can go right now. We can go? Well, we can go right now. That's what's up. You think you can take the old man? Come on, what's up? Did you start? It's a Studio 5 first look at Waves, a film starring This Is Us star Sterling K. Brown and being called the true meaning of love covering a multitude of sins. It hits theaters November 15th. Everything I do is for you. Hey, stop. We are not afforded the luxury of being average. At number two. You're here to spread the gospel. I'm not here for your entertainment. I'm an evangelist. Kanye West's movie and music are both titled Jesus is King and both are still a buzz, scoring many headlines even a week after being released. And Kanye is certainly happy to talk about it. Did you always know that this was, you were gonna end up here? I mean, 10 years ago, you kinda said it. Yes, but I definitely was lost. I got lost, I got caught up in my own ego. At number one. How do you do? Good, We're confident, composed, wise enough to know not to look a strange white man in the eyes. It's you know, another you know. sneak peek and look behind the scenes of the film Harriet. Something really wonderful about the way Casey wrote it is that you see Harriet as a woman, not just as the superhero. And because you get to see her as a woman, her being a superhero is all the more important because of the things that she had to go through as a, as a, as a woman, as a person, as a human being. Well, with us now is Ephraim Graham, and it's great to have you back with Good us. Good to be Good back. To see Thank you. Ephraim. Thank you. All right, let's start off with the controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Kurt Franklin being edited, and for the life of me, I don't understand why anyone would edit that out. Heartbreaking, and it's happened twice. So he said uh, it happened three years ago when we saw the Dallas police officers shot, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, black men being shot at the hands of police officers. Uh, and at that time, not only was there um, 
his speech, but there was also a call to prayer that happened in the award ceremony that was taken out. And then this time for it to be taken out when he mentions uh, another young girl, a black girl, who's also in the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is mm -hmm. where Kirk Franklin was born, raised and where he lives. So this also hits very it's close to home local, for him. Very, yeah, so very it's very close. Yeah, to it's home. very close to home for him. And she was killed in her house, in her house, literally playing, shot through the window, playing a video, playing a game? video game, watching her eight year old nephew. Goodness. Yeah, and he witnessed it. So Kirk Franklin called for prayer for that that woman's family, that little boy, as well as the police officer's why, why family. Was she, who shot. Why was she shot? Unfortunately, um, the police responded to a call that a door was left open. A neighbor said, my, my neighbor's door is left open. It's been open all day. That's not normal. He wanted someone to come and check it out. Turns out she just left the door open by mistake. She was babysitting and taking care of her nephew. He sees her through the window and I guess gives her an order to put her hands up. She's not sure what's going on from what we can gather. And he shoots her through the window without even entering the apartment. So there was outrage uh, over that because it was certainly unnecessary. His life wasn't um, threatened. Even the police department has come out and spoken against his actions um, and the way he handled that call. Um, so Kirk Franklin then just calling for prayer for that. That mm -hmm. part of his speech edited out happens twice now to him. And he mm -hmm. says, for that reason, and he's met with TBN. He's met with um, GMA. They agree, yes, we've made a mistake. But he says, until we figure out how this can be rectified, uh, I don't want any parts. And now other artists are stepping up and saying the same thing. Natalie Grant has joined him. Lecrae has joined him. Wow. Marvin Sapp has joined him saying, wow. we will not stand silent and let this happen. It's happened twice. Yeah. Something's got to be done. Any explanation yeah. from, from on why it was edited? No explanation as to why. They're saying that the only explanation they gave is that um, the show is, of course, taped. Uh -huh. And then they've got to edit it down to fit the two-hour window that they have for broadcast. They're saying that in, in doing that, they cut out many things that disappointed people. Uh, they do regret cutting out this because they know the impression that it leaves. Mm -hmm. My best guess in watching is... I can see someone sitting in the room saying, mm, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to get anybody upset. Maybe we should pull that part out because it's a little too sensitive. And it just goes to the constant mistake in this country. Well, i got plenty of arguments. I, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I yeah. agree with you. But I think it just goes to, yes. It goes to the same argument, like, though. No, you got to. You always want to shy away from talking to, about race. We you don't to, want to talk about it. We yeah. have to stand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the why would someone be shot through a window of an apartment mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, mm -hmm. you just, what is that yeah. about? It, it, and if that's going to happen, then is, the, the, is our entire culture going to say, please don't invite the police into this yeah. because when you do, it's going to be very dangerous for them to show up. That's the danger. That's the danger. Just consider that eight-year-old boy who mm -hmm. that's that's his memory of likely his first significant intimate react, uh, interaction with a police officer, mm. your aunt being shot. Yeah. Just as she took a break from playing a game with you, a video game mm -hmm. to see why police were at the door. And it's sad that this is coming from an organization that represents the church. Absolutely. Of all things that represents mm -hmm. the church. So I just it just goes to show where their priorities are. I, I don't. My hope is, and I've talked to um, people behind the scenes of the Dove Awards, is my hope is that there will be some sort of town hall, something where we can actually, as believers, talk about this. Yeah. Because there's a lot going on here. And mm -hmm. for these other artists to come forward and say, yeah, I kind of get where you he's coming from. It? I would love to. I would love you to host it here. Yes, I would love to. Come on. Bless. Yes. All right, let's okay. Yes, let's, let's do it. it. Let's yes. do it. Yes. A town hall. 700 Club address. Interactive we address. exclusives. Yes. I agree. Awesome. No, awesome. We'll, we'll put it up on the internet. That way we don't have to edit. That's right. That's right. Very good <laughs> yeah, thing. No, no editing I got, 20, involved. I got 30 minutes. We can, we can all I don't do think it. 30 minutes is enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's, you. you know. We've got to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Well, 100%. let's talk about Kanye West. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked. I mean, I feel like he's been in the he's top five week. for a long <laughs> time now. Every week. Exactly. Yes, yes. Every week. we gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta go positive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but we have to talk about it. Kanye West, incredible, incredible. Just what's going on in his life. I mean, he's he's born again, y'all. I, I he love is born it. I again. love it uh, because he is such an example of, of of a true walk with Christ. You find your life changing, and he yeah. doesn't shy away 
even the conversation the interviews that he's doing mm -hmm. from saying, yeah, I let my ego get in the way. Yes. And he even says, I knew that God was calling me 10 years ago. I knew that. I said it. Yeah. You, can, you can find the video and watch him say it. He goes, but after saying that, my head got in the way. Mm -hmm. I decided, you know, well, I'm going to be a perfectionist. And people who work with him say he is indeed just that. I mean, working, you know, nonstop. Yeah. And then he realizes, you know, that he went off the rails mm -hmm. and he wasn't following the plan that God had set for him. Yep. Uh, he even went as far as to, I mean, in his lyrics, say, you know, I'm not interested in converting atheists. But those are lines he says, I'll never say again. Wow. There's music that I perform before you will never hear me perform mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I do, you will not hear the lyrics that you think you want to yeah. hear. And in his song, Jesus Walks, at the end, the original lyric was, I'm afraid to talk to God or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's changed the lyrics and says, I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah. I was like, ooh, <laughs> go ahead, Kanye. <laughs> you are not afraid. It's so I good. I love it. Yeah. His evolution. Uh, it's beautiful to see. Yeah. It is beautiful to see, but at the same time, shouldn't we have a note of caution? I always have a note of caution when celebrities convert. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want to say, well, okay, let's, let's season this for a while. I agree. Yeah. I, I understand what he's doing, yes. and I applaud what he's doing, and he's saying, here's where I am, and, and boy, is he ever being transparent Absolutely. about where he is and yeah. where he's come from. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but I've just seen too many celebrity conversions that, right. you know, you get five years, 10 years down the road. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I say certainly one to watch and we watch, watch with caution, celebrate um, what he is doing. But should, should, I guess my question is, mm -hmm. should we watch with caution or should we just say, you go? I say, I, I receive him and, yeah. and go, but I know, I know the, the scripture says, you, know, you shall know them by the fruit. So mm -hmm. we're seeing this now. Let's That's just good. continue yeah. to watch the yep. fruit. What, what does he produce? How yeah. much changes? Um, and, we, and we see what happens. I mean, he even says that even as far as his profits uh, and the money that he's making, that it's going to go back into the church. Let's watch and see what happens. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. hopefully yeah. a lot of fruit. I uh, hope so. Uh, yeah. Because America needs a lot of fruit. I tell you, he is impacting people. My 18-year-old son in South Korea sends me Kanye's album as his dad. There are two songs you need to sing in worship. And I thought, Wow. wow. I didn't even know you realized that I did anything yeah. with worship. Wow. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. I got to get a plug in for Harriet. Oh, it's such a good yes. film. It is such a good film. Um, if you want to see the faith of a woman who could not read or write, but literally listen to the voice of God mm. to travel 100 miles more than a dozen times to rescue at least 70 slaves. It's amazing. Incredible. I mean, amazing. And everyone I talked to, um, all said the very same thing. There is no Harriet without faith in God. There is no journey without faith in God. And we're doing actually the entire 30 minutes of Studio 5 this week mm. on the film Harriet. Wow. So you get behind the scenes with the director, with the stars. Uh, we visit uh, Harriet Tubman's uh, home in Dorchester, Maryland, where she was mm. born and raised. Um, you get it all. Wow. I so we should see, see the film? You should definitely see the film. When does it film. come out? It comes out this Friday. Uh -huh. uh, I encourage everyone. Opening weekend is critical um, because it's it true, just yeah. shows Hollywood yeah. mm -hmm. that we like it. This is something we want to see more of. So let's support it opening weekend. And I say see it more than once. I've yeah. already seen it twice. And I'm going to see it a third time. I'm definitely going to see it. It's very right. I look forward to it. That's a plug. Yes. <laughs> well, for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's <laughs> weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbn.com slash studio five. And Ephraim, always thanks for being with us. Pleasure. Ash. All right. Well, coming up, parents struggling with drugs, domestic violence, and more. There are often children who are stripped out of these situations, and it's tragic. See how we're bringing hope to foster kids, one bag at a time. You don't want to miss this inspiring story, so stay with us. There are over 400,000 kids in foster care in the United States. That's about one in every 184 children, and most of them travel with their belongings in a garbage bag. The team here at 700 Club Interactive wanted to do something to help, so we partnered with 127 Initiative, a nonprofit that aims to provide care and community to kids and families in foster care. Take a look. When you hear about a drug bust or domestic violence on the news, 
I can promise you that there's a child there that may seem invisible because they can't be mentioned because they're a minor, but there are often children who are stripped out of these situations and it's tragic. We realized the shortcomings of the system and how undermet their needs were. We knew we had to do something. We knew we had the ability to do something, and so we did. And that's where Bags of Hope come in. Hey you guys, welcome. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, I am so incredibly thankful to have every one of you here. These are duffel bags that are age specific and gender specific, and they are stuffed with all brand new items of pajamas and socks and underwear and toiletries and comfort items like a stuffed animal or a blanket, and depending you know, on the age. It's basically supposed to be enough stuff in the bag to meet their physical needs for two to three days. Unfortunately, um, a lot of times when kids come into care, they don't come in with much at all. If they come in with clothes, it might be an outfit or so, and it, it typically comes in a plastic bag or a trash bag. We sometimes get children in the middle of the night, so if you can imagine you get a baby in the middle of the night, and they don't even have formula. We take them from their home of origin and place them in a foster care home. That's trauma in and of itself. We might only get 30 minutes notice that we're receiving a child. So we don't have the time to reach out, to run out and get the diapers, to get the, the underwear, the onesies or pajamas that they might need for the night. So to get it, for them to come into the home with a bag, it's really, it takes a little bit of stress off of us. It's a little sigh of a relief because you're trying to take these kids home and get them settled. Not have to run out to the store and get some more stuff. They are taken from their home so quickly that their items are in a garbage bag. So when they get something that's nice and attractive and then they can bring that into their, into their new foster home, Something that's theirs, it just means a lot to them. And one of the children opens the bag and pulls out like a perfume, a body spray, and she says, this is my favorite. I said, I know, because it was made just for you. And she held onto that bag like it was literally made just for her. And it really was. It's so rewarding to be able to give something to a child that may not have them. We're talking about basic necessities, diapers, wipes, books, toys, very basic things that we could really take for granted. But for these children, it's everything. We put in some pacifiers, bottles, toys, blankets, onesies. I feel pretty good about stuffing bags because it lets them know that there are people caring for them. I feel good about this, knowing that we can do something for them when they have pretty much nothing. My favorite thing I put in the bag was a blanket because it was cute. We need to help them because they're in need. It has been amazing to hear story after story about the impact that we're making on a regular basis, um, that these bags of hope are truly serving the purpose that we set out for, that in their darkest moment, they believe and know that someone was thinking of and praying for them and that these items are specifically for them when they don't know what's next. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would equip them, that you would strengthen them, Father, that they would hear your words above all the noise, above all the chaos, God, that they would know that they are valued and they are loved and that you are there with them. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you and bring them back to you. God has such a heart, you know, for the fatherless, and that's what we're talking about here. I think that it's not a mere suggestion. I think that God tells us <laughs> to care for the widows and orphans in James 127, and so it's a mandate. It's what God calls us to do. Yeah, he really does love and he wants us to care for the orphans and the widows. And that's what we did that night. It was a really cool night to just give back to the community. Yeah. And um, I mean, honestly, I didn't, I'm not involved in foster care. I don't know the issues. And so this was just a great way for me to learn from the outside. You know, these kids come in with garbage bags and their clothes aren't washed and they're not clean. And so I just think this initiative is incredible. And I'm so glad that we were able to help out. And we filled a bunch of bags, I think 200 <laughs> bags. And then some of the 7CI team members, you know, donated items. I believe Superbook donated DVDs and booklets. And it was just a really good night to give back. Yeah, it's one of the great places is that you can just do effective ministry right where you are exactly. in your own neighborhood. And let me underline, whenever you see in the news that uh, someone's been involved in a drug bust or mm -hmm. there's been some kind of an arrest, 
uh, you can pretty much guarantee behind that, uh, yeah. you know, at a certain age level, uh, they're going to be children who now need mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. And and what do we as a community, what do we yeah. do as Christians? Um, and it's a great way to give back. Yeah. And the Bible underlines it. Yeah. Pure and undefiled religion mm. is taking care of widows and orphans. Yeah, and the founder, I mean, she's the real deal. Like she was there with two foster babies. Um, their moms were on drugs. And I mean, she, it's just her story is incredible. She, her heart bleeds for those kids and you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you want to learn more or sponsor a bag of hope for a foster child, you can go to 127initiative.org. Still to come, this tough guy was a racist prison gang enforcer. My job, I felt, was to lame, cripple, or eliminate every white man, black man, red, yellow, polka dot stripe, it didn't matter. So what spooked him straight? Find out next, right after this. The Enforcer, that's how tough guy Roland Nava was known in prison. As the protector of Latino inmates, his motto was, if you're not brown, you're not going to be around. His job was to cripple anyone who stood in his way until a voice brought him to his knees. And I found a lighter and I started striking the clothes in the closet. Went down probably a couple of blocks and turned around and I was getting excited for seeing the house burn. Roland Nava was only eight when he set fire to his parents' home. Did out of anger. I wanted them to feel some kind of pain. His heroin-addicted father beat him regularly. The abuse mixed with a drug-infested neighborhood in Houston made it hard for Roland to imagine a happy life. And I would get whooped. My dad was of it. I would never amount to anything. I just felt so much hatred at that young age. Roland's only safe place was with his Christian grandmother. When I was with my grandma, I felt important. I felt like I was somebody because I was treated like somebody. She also took him to church and at times even anointed him with oil. But the abuse at home overshadowed any godly influence his grandmother had. On the streets and alone by 14, Roland would spend much of his life bitter and angry. Seeing how life was at that time, and it just hardened my heart. If I couldn't be happy, I didn't want nobody else to be happy. Theft, forgery, DUIs, and drug possession would fill his rap sheet for the next two decades. In that time, he married three times, had five kids, and was an enforcer for a notorious crime syndicate. Getting high, drinking, stealing. Their hands were up in the air while I was robbing them, and I felt that was power. I thought that's what a man was. Even then, Roland still visited his grandmother, his only reminder that there was some reason to have hope. No matter what I did, she always loved me. She goes, I'm praying for you, mijo. That means son. When she passed away, I didn't go to her funeral. Didn't want to face the fact that the only positive person in my life was gone. There was nobody to turn to no more. Alone more now than ever, Roland was homeless, jobless, and hopeless. I felt worthless. I felt that that's what I was put on earth for, to suffer. Nobody knew that I ate out of a dumpster, that I slept in abandoned cars. I was tired of living. I was tired of just who I was. And I felt that there was nowhere else to go, so I slashed my wrist and my upper arm. His self-inflicted wounds healed. Then in 2006, after a high-speed chase, Roland would again land in prison for resisting arrest. As prisoner 01160789, Roland was known as the enforcer for a violent Latino gang. I was a part of an organization. If you weren't brown, you weren't gonna be around. My job, I felt, was to lame, cripple, or eliminate every white man, black man, red, yellow, polka dot stripe, it didn't matter. 
while lying in his cell at the end of his year-long sentence. Roland heard a voice ask him a question. He told me why was I persecuting my brothers when I heard that voice. I fell off the bunk. I couldn't see. They checked me. There was nothing wrong with my eyes. Three days later, my sight came back. After that, I just felt I was to study the Word of God. Roland quit the gang immediately. In response, four men ambushed, beat, and stabbed him. In the midst of the attack, Roland heard that voice again. I thought I was going to die in there because they were coming against me. When I heard God's voice, he said, when you get out of here, I want you to minister to the homeless, to those that are hungry, those in addiction, and those that are coming out of incarceration. I knew that I was going to get out of prison. That's when I knew God was real. Roland escaped with minor injuries and the very next week gave his life to Christ and a radical transformation began. I could talk to another man of another race and not have hatred in him, not have hatred in my heart, to be friends with the ones that I was against. Upon his release in 2007, Roland would continue learning to put others and Christ first in his life. Today, he runs a ministry focused on helping poverty-stricken and formerly imprisoned individuals. And in 2019, was named Bastrop, Texas Man of the Year. He's back on the streets, but with a very different mission in mind. Today, I'm not robbing nobody. Today, my hands are up in the air because I'm praising God. That anger is gone. I am worth something, and I am somebody. Now, to me, a man is one who follows the Lord and has Jesus in his heart. To my grandmother, would be very pleased. God still shows up today. He still speaks today. You can still hear his voice. You can still hear his call. For Roland, here he is in prison, and he gets a question. Why, why are you hurting your brothers? And, and he's struck blind. And because of that, he says, well, I got to quit all this. I can't hurt my brothers anymore. And then retaliation, and in that, the call to ministry, when you get out of here. So there's a promise in the middle of the attack, you're going to live through this. You're going to survive, and not just survive, you're going to get out. What prison do you need to get out of? What, what's it going to take for you to finally turn to say, God, I want it your way? I don't want it my way. If you want to hear his voice, here's a very simple prayer. God, could you speak to me? Could you show up for me? Could you show me that you're my savior? Because if you are my savior, if you came for me, could you show me? Could you show up? If you pray that with all of your heart, he'll answer it and he'll come to you because he died for you. If you need help with this prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Isaiah, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland.